Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 36 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and this week I'm going to show you how to make a little soft-sculptured pumpkin for your decorations for the holidays. And in this, you're going to learn uh, several different techniques using the creative feet. And uh, I can't thank you guys enough for joining me each week for the show. I lost my mouse. There it is. <laughs> okay, so let's say hello. Hello, Tina. Pam Suri. You're, I think you're new. New Mexico. And my microphone was just gone. Grammy's Corner. Welcome. Sandy Flynn. Diane Durham. Your mom was born in Chicka Chickasha. I think I said that right. Well, thank goodness you're all still there. I got one more thing to set up here. So I can function. So I was going to do a wall or door decoration, and I am still planning on doing that for Halloween. But while I was doing it, I realized it's really a pattern that I need to do, and those take longer to develop than showing you something like this. And I just thought this was a really cute idea, even for a pen cushion for your desk. And I also did this while I was preparing it because I was trying to get the shape of the pumpkin. Seeing lots of different tutorials on making them, I realized that none of them really are sewn so that you can have each section be a different color. And so I did figure it out, even though it's hard to tell because I used the same fabric. But let me show you the... So you can see that it is... There are seam allowances. There's a stitch for each one of these sections so that you can combine different fabric options together to create this pumpkin and end up having the pumpkin shape. So while I was doing it, I tried some other shapes. This was one of the shapes that I tried, and this is what ended up making this little bolster, which was kind of like a orange peel shape. And I really like this look as well. I think this would make beautiful pillows. What do you guys think? Would you like having one of these on your couch? And then you can make a gigantic one for your feet. But you know what you can use this for? Your elbow when you're using the Octi Hoops. The button doesn't seem to bother me, so I'm thinking this is my new Octi Hoop elbow pad. <laughs> and uh, it's with my favorite fabric for the year. Okay, so the secret to this is to think of it as an orange and you're gonna, or a pizza, and you're gonna slice it and re-sew it. Now, each slice you do, you have to allow for the seam allowance where you're gonna join the two together. So I did not cut these out yet. And on these, I didn't even use a pattern. I just folded fabric and cut randomly, so it's not as perfect as it could be. So I'm gonna try for perfect here today. And I was thinking, of adding maybe some yarn to the top of this one. So you're all chatting, getting to know each other. So this will end up being another one of those. I don't need that right now. Now if you wrap yours really light, lightly, then we could have gotten this to be the shape of a pumpkin, but it's hard to, to have it look good doing that. And also, you, you need to use the strings in order to pull it in. I was going to be all ready. Several things happened. I think Windows did an update, and I was unaware. And when it does that, it changes settings of my microphone. And I could not find it. 
Then I realized I could move my mouse and carry it over to the screen so I could see what I was reading. Okay. It's not something you have to do every day. And whenever you don't have to do something every day, it's harder to remember the steps you follow. And each time I have an issue like that, I think, oh, next time I'm going to really, I'm going to know exactly what to do. But, so really what I need to do is cut one pizza shape out and use it as a pattern. And I'm not going to use my really good scissors. I want to make a bigger pumpkin today. And these will be PDF files on, inside of the school is where we store all the documents for our patterns. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and create that seam allowance. So quarter inch seam allowance. You can use a ruler to be more precise, which I'm going to do because Well, we'll do this one. So far, the biggest problem I have with my show is the microphone. And last week, somebody had trouble hearing me. She asked if I was wearing a mask, and I played it back afterward. And there was a, there was a period of time where I sounded really far away. So I'm trying really hard to make sure I move my face to the mic, even if I'm working on this camera. You guys let me know if I start sounding off. Oh, wow, the, uh, the chat went away on the screen. It's all right, I can adapt. So this is what I need to cut. And this is how many pieces or slices we need. So eight slices makes a full pumpkin. Those of you who've been watching the show since I started know that I have had many days where the start doesn't go as planned. I really want to work more on this one. This was a couple weeks back. That's where I left it. So I am going to press, and I was thinking about, should I do one? Should I just do plain two colors, or should I do two colors? And if I do two colors, should I do these two or these two? And green. <coughs> This doesn't look like green, but it really is. It's like a army green. And it contrasts really nicely with the thread. So have any of you ever made a soft sculpture pumpkin before? You want me to find another batik? Tina, put two two batiks together, or or just pick different spots on this as different sections of the pumpkin, because it does have. This is one of the reasons I like these types of batiks because co they coordinate in color wise, and then cutting different sections makes it look like you had different ones. I just thought a solid 
in between might look good. I do prefer the batiks. I'm a batik girl. Are you guys also fond of batiks? If you are, do a thumbs up in the chat. The more you interact in the chat, the more YouTube thinks you're having a good time. Well, it's not that big. Hold your ears. All right, I'm going to press this out. And it's time to add water to the iron. I usually can read the chat there, but it's not there. Now it's over here. Hello, Amy. Welcome. You're late. That's okay. You missed the fiasco. They can all tell you what happened. You have not missed much at all. So if I'm doing a Halloween door, I'm gonna have you guys vote because there's so many options. And I was thinking about doing a whole door, but that's a lot. And I can't ever really show that much in one episode, can I? I mean, I could have another six hour session, but I don't do that anymore. So I was thinking of a smaller one, something that you could use for your front door, but also inside of your home. Or you could use the pattern to make it into a pillow or a little quilt, maybe a quillow for one of your grandkids or kids, depending on your luck. If you got a grandkid, I don't have any of those. Keep in mind when you fold fabric that now you're having right side on one side and right side on the other. So if you're plotting out something like this, and the shape is different, it may cause problems. But since the shape is the exact same shape for all of the pieces, it doesn't matter. And I can fold this and cut them all at once. So I just need eight, eight layers to cut at once. This is definitely a wooden presser project, too. There we go. But I do kind of want to be picky. I really love this area. I do with my good scissors. Oh, there they are. I've never had to start my computer all the way back up again. So that was interesting this morning or this afternoon. This kind of looks like Let's see. I'm putting all right sides up to start so I don't have to think. So Amy, I am going to upload the shape in a PDF format inside of the school. I almost did it before the show started. So I think I can It's in essence an eight sliced pizza piece of or it's an eight slice pizza. And this is one of the slices of the pizza and we add a quarter inch seam allowance to each 
of these sections on the sides so that you will end up with that size pumpkin when you're done. I will put the PDF, I have this size one already ready, but if you want the size that I'm doing, this is how big it is. Of course, I could make a pattern piece with several different pieces of slices of pizza. Can't, won't I? Or can't I? Problem is, is I have somewhere to be after this. But within, within 48 hours, I should have the, I would, I'll do that. I'll give you several different pieces or slices, sizes of slices. Because I think I'm going to want a lot of these pumpkins because I've seen people stack them up on their fireplace. Are they called heaths or her earth? Hearse? What does it, what is it called on a fireplace? What is that called? Help me remember you guys. Yes, sewing is all about the math. We got one, two, three, four. So I need four more. And I think I'd like to have some of this darker color to, con to contrast. Because on this one, you can't really see the divides that I did as well as I would have liked. And this is it. This is the project. Isn't it cute? I think it's cute. And, and I'm like, okay, so this is a flat pumpkin. You know how they're, some of them are flatter and some are taller than others. So I really am going to play around with the uh, shape a little because I think that I'm, I'm, this is going to kind of be a tryout to see if this ends up making a taller pumpkin it should but i think there's got to be a way of keeping it narrow and having it tall i am going to learn more about make, making pumpkins i think i want some of that orange coming through So any of you make a soft sculpture pumpkin before? It is a hearth. I, I'm right. I love it when I'm right. Oh my goodness. Okay. Don't we all love it when we're right? I may have to do this in two pieces just, just in case. I, I, nothing worse than thinking you got it right and then cutting one off. All right. It's autumn. Is it starting to feel like autumn where any of you live? Are you starting to see the leaves change? So biggest ones on the bottom. If I have the biggest ones on the bottom and the smallest one on the top, then I should be able to cut. That one's weird. Sometimes trying to save time costs you more. I'm just going to do two, I think. I'm using a pen, everybody. Announcement. Because <laughs> I don't use them very often, do I? This is a rolling ruler. And it is a narrower or a thinner profile with that pin. This is why I don't like using pins. Maybe I pin it up here. There we go. If you use a low, pro low profile ruler like this, you need to be careful because 
your ruler or your rotary cutter can go up on to the ruler easier. Ooh, this is really bad. <laughs> this needs a new blade. I don't know where this one came from. All of a sudden it showed up. Where's my other one? My There it is. See, all you got to do is talk out loud, and then this little voice in your head goes, it's over there. I know it's not a high-priced cutter. It's just a little for scars. I got it. Joanne's. Probably one of the times I was at a show and I needed to cut fabric and forgot to pack my rotary cutters. I think I have 15, 16 of these. We did a rotary, count, a rotary cutter count once and everybody was chiming in saying how many cutters, rotary cutters they have. Do you guys remember how many rotary, rotary cutters you have? How many pairs of scissors do you own? How many sewing machines do you own? Even though I have so many machines, I don't know how many machines I have. I ordered one <laughs> recently. I actually ordered it because it was so, so inexpensive. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, I'm buying it because... You can never have too many sewing machines. Anybody else agree with me? Give me a thumbs up. Actually, my daughter's starting to show interest. And, and so, and I had one, I have a machine reserved for her, but you know how long I've had it on reserve for her? Let's see. The machine released in 1978, and it's a fabulous machine. The Janome 7500. However, if something goes wrong with with the machine, I don't know if they can replace the boards anymore. I think someone told me they couldn't get that rolling ruler just rolled onto the floor. Am I going to be able to do this? My sister, my older sister, she is going to start sewing. That's something I never thought I'd see happen. So she's like, well, you have to teach me how to sew now. And I'm like, I have a show I sh air every, every Thursday. You can join in. But I'm going to go over to her house and give her a machine use lesson and help her go through all the sewing supplies that she inherited from my mother. All right. So the pumpkin that I made, because I just kind of cut pizza slices and didn't measure, um, wasn't, wasn't perfectly round. It was kind of square. This is going to avoid you from that. And these all have the quarter inch seam allowance built in. And I have two different colors of thread in the machine. I'm using 40 weight polyester thread and for those of you who aren't aware, the embroidery thread that you have can be used for sewing as well. It's just a, a finer quality thread, and there's nothing wrong with having finer quality thread in your garments. There's a fly in here. I can't find the puppy again. All right. So I'm using an 8012 universal needle. We don't need a lot when just going doing piecing. This is kind of like piecing a quilt, except for we're piecing a pumpkin.
I forgot what I had you thumbs up about. The foot I use for quarter inch seam allowances is my satin edge foot. And the satin edge foot has a guide connected to the presser foot itself. And inside of the opening, you can see a wire in there. Let me see. There we go. And what you do is you bring your, so this is the seam allowance. You'd bring your needle down onto the seam allowance. And then, so your needle is down there and then you move the, the guide a quarter inch away from the needle. And I do that using a measuring tape generally, but I know that my machine in the left needle position with the guide all the way to the right is a quarter inch seam allowance. So now we're going to take, make sure we got right sides together. And do I, I want to, I want to make sure you can really tell there's a segment. So if we've got, I think I'm going to segment them out here. Just like using a design board to lay out your quilt blocks before you start sewing your pieces together. Didn't I do more dark? Here they are. I didn't do enough darks. Oh well. Is there not eight? It's just my pumpkin anyway. Can always just have it facing one direction so everybody can see it. And I think I really should cut off. This would be one of those times when you use the, cut the dog ear off before you begin for a quarter inch. We'll see if I have any trouble with that. Okay, right side up. I think that's right side up. Oh, that is. All right, I'm not gonna overthink this because, you know, overthinking things is, you know, not my style, is it? Might be easier to sew. That's me changing my mind mid-sentence. If I don't say the whole sentence, I haven't said it. So on my machine with the guide all the way to the right, inside the channel, because every once in a while someone will call me and they're like, the, the wire is on top of the foot because they actually move the guide too far out to the right to try to achieve the quarter inch seam allowance because they forgot to put the needle in the left needle position. So if you ever do that, know that you're not alone. And the reason that person couldn't hear me last time is because I moved my microphone above me. So I got to figure out where to put it so I can see. There we go. As we work with this foot, we're gonna, I'm going to push toward the foot just gently. I don't even really cause the buckling of the fabric, but those that are physically or visually challenged do find comfort in feeling that little buckling that happens in the fabric when you push toward the side of the foot and the foot pushes back the other way instead of putting your hands in front of and behind always to the side one finger pushing just a gentle push and as much as it would take to move the thread around on the machine so not a real tight hold my foot control has also decided to wander Okay, so what? The bobbin thread is almost empty. Is it? 
I don't believe it. We'll see. <laughs> I don't like it when the machine's smarter than me. I'm just going to keep saying there's still bobbin and thread in there. See if I can use it all the way up. I don't like wasting the little bit of bobbin thread that's on the bobbin. See how much further I was able to go? And I am going to forward and reverse. <laughs> I guess I used a lot of bobbin thread, and I know why, because I was testing the pattern. So this would be a presser project. Where are all my pressers? Any meeny miny mo. Which one should I use? I had a red one on here today. This one is blue hornet. This one is green hornet. And I love that one. I love it a lot. This is tiger. And it really does look like tiger to me. And then this is Tequila Sunrise. It's a popular one because you can find it easy. And I don't know where my red one went. Oh well. I'm going to use Green Hornet because I, I just love it. I like it because it has a lot of different shades of green in it. So I am going to press the seam open. And that's one of the reasons that I recommend that you actually, <laughs> what is I gonna say? Don't you guys just love your presser and not having to use the iron when you're doing things like that? Now you can see the dog ears and we're going to chop those puppies off. I completely forgot. Oh well. If you need to know it, I'm sure I will say it again. So I guess this one goes here. So always starting from the outside of the pizza, go toward the middle. You could use the glue if you want. I did spray starch this fabric, so it has a nice body. Always starting in. And then, oh, I forgot to change the bobbin. All right, I'll be, I'll behave. I will listen. So why do I use a different color bobbin thread than needle thread? Is so that when I go to gather this, which we will be doing, I will know which one is the bobbin and which one is the one that you hold on to when you stretch. Where's my box of bobbins? I'm just going to use a deco bobbin because I don't have a color that I like already wound. It is the one that I pull on though, so I am going to wind a bobbin. Because 80 weight is half as thick as 40 weight. And the whole point of using the 40 weight thread on this is to not have your thread break. We're going to be stuffing it rather full and that can make threads break. And also... pulling on the bobbin thread as well. So, and I used up a bobbin that I already had. Thank you. 
The idea is to make make it blend in with the with the actual project, but be be a different color than your needle thread. So we have a. I had a neon orange, which I thought I had that spool sitting here. So I'm just going to switch to a yellow. And the needle thread is this reddish color. No real science to it, just easy to remember which one you're going to use. Gotta unthread the machine. I could have just wound a bobbin of this, but I already did one row of stitching. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just a pumpkin, for goodness sake. Feel free to ask questions as I wind this bobbin. This is the thread dispenser that I'm using. And it is designed to work with little cones of thread like this. So you get better stitch quality. I tied a knot. I gotta waste some thread. Maybe I can use that for my hand sewing later. There is a little hand sewing in this project. That's another thing you don't see me do very often. Maybe I can get that knot to undo. Don't you hate it when things like that happen? It's not a real knot. It's just some kind of thing that happens in all kinds of strings and yarns and necklaces. And you're like, I did not tie a knot. How did that knot get there? Come on. Just come loose. You want to come out. Nope, got a knot. Oh well. This machine has a automatic needle threader. Oh gosh, I'm winding a bobbin, you guys. Why didn't you tell me? It's all your fault. You guys are supposed to yell. I can't hear you though, you know. I was just threading that as a normal thread. I did have a full bobbin. I did this last night. When I normally would relax and watch TV, I went, you know what? I'm going to make a pumpkin. caught her. I was puppy fishing and I caught one. Hi baby. Tinkerbell says hi everybody. I'll give you a ride to your bed. <laughs> okay back to winding a bobbin. These are the things I don't like making you wait for. It may be tempting to hold that thread until it breaks, but it's not a good experience when the bobbin starts to run out. It is far better to cut it and make sure you're not holding really tight on the thread when you wind a bobbin like that. I should have a bag to put all these threads in so I can make fabric from thread one day for you guys. But I do have, she's, boxes and boxes and tubs of thread so I think if I ever go to do that lesson which requires our stick and rinse I'll just probably grab all the thread that is so old I shouldn't use it on anything and some thread does have a shelf life natural fiber thread silk and cotton rayon those three do have a shelf life so if you go to use a thread and you're going to make a project and it needs a strong seam like piecing on a quilt, 
you just stretch the thread and if it breaks real easy well it's going to break that easy in any project that you use it on unless you're doing like embroidery with it then it can it can be a little bit weaker of course you're more likely to have it break while you're sewing as well Can you see her over here making her bed? She's all digging. It's just not quite right. All right, so now I have a lighter bobbin. The same kind of thread, same weight and type, which is the 40 weight polyfast thread that you find at creativefeet.com. Bless you, Tink. She still has these allergies. So sorry you have allergies, baby. Hey, Amy, guess what? I don't know where the lid is. <laughs> oh, I know it, it bugs you. I found it last week. So now I'm just threading this in the needle same color I used yesterday so my brain doesn't have to work as hard to think about which one the bobbin thread is I love my needle threader so we are having or we are in the mist, the mixed, my, my, my vocabulary is, is having issues today. We are having butterfly migration in Arizona, and there's thousands of butterflies just fluttering around all over the place. I keep getting run into by butterflies when I walk outside. We have the painted ladies and some little yellow butterflies that are like mostly yellow. You don't really see a lot of color. And then we have some really, really, really tiny, tiny little butterflies. They're so cute. Are any of you experiencing butterflies flying around in your area? We also have the cicadas that are making obnoxious noise every day. And our grasshoppers. So we have like this is bug season, and I'm hoping the mosquitoes will slow down, but we definitely, this is the National Geographic by Claire for Arizona. Amy, you got the butterflies down in Phoenix? Start in, so back first. It makes it much easier. You're less likely to have your fabric pull up on you if you start on and go back and then come back forward. Then my focus is up here and I put one finger down right there. And that's just to keep the two fabrics together, which you could substitute with our liquid base glue. Now this lid's been off since last week. And it was, and look at that, it's still there. It's not a good habit. You guys should definitely not not do what I do. Do what I say. Now I don't have to hold my finger there. Now I can just put one finger here. Gentle touch and floor it. Oops, I gotta go back. My drawer opened. I really gotta fix this thing. It looked like I didn't get away with it, but I got away with it. So now I'm gonna open it again. And this is really the best way of opening your seams flat. This machine needs a new thread cutter. So we, f we press it one way and then press it the other way. And this is where you don't get any 
creases that you don't don't think are there only to find out that you do why i like to fold my seams flat whenever i have a anything i'm making where all of the seams come together at one point because that is where you have so many layers of material that was the glue holding the fabrics together but you see i was able to pull it apart where's my other dog ear oh my other dog ear got in there i didn't get away with it so i can get away with that So see how they overlap one another? It's much less bulk right here where they all come together. Lots of butterflies there as well, Amy. How nice. There was a pair of them mating and they ran into me. delightful to have them something beautiful to focus on and then on the other side you're setting the seam oh we're starting on the outside of the pizza So just so you know, a bigger pizza or a bigger pumpkin is easier to sew than a smaller pumpkin. So if you want to do the easiest one first, it mostly has to do with the stuffing part. It's a lot easier to stuff something that's larger rather than something that's smaller. Yes, all the butterflies, they, they say they're heading to Mexico, but they f seem like they're heading north. Because I can see Flagstaff Mountains from my home and the Twin Peaks. The San Francisco Peaks, I mean. <laughs> I think Twin Peaks is a show or a movie or something. But they all seem to be flying toward... Flagstaff from Prescott, so. But I'm sure that they're right. So if you're into paper piecing, this is also fabulous for paper piecing, these pressers. And I use the same pressing process on there. I fold to one side, fold to the other, and then spread them open. And I do always press my seams open on, on the, uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> paper piecing. So now I could keep going around doing one slice of pizza at a time, but now it's easier to, to have one half done and set it aside and then construct this half. Then when I fold it over, I can do two slices of pizzas really fast. And whenever we can speed things up without adding confusion, I'm all for it. I definitely feel like we got a, better, a much better result by gluing one little dot at the tip. No sense having it the possibility of anything shifting. We can alleviate shifting of our fabric. We eliminate ever ripping out a seam. We don't have to secure the beginning, but I'm definitely going for the liquid base glue at the, at the little point. And if I put it at the very, very point, I think I might be able to just cut off that as the dog ear. I may not even have to even have to open it. We'll see. So I put it right on the very tip of that. 
So a couple stitches forward, okay, and then go back. I'm having trouble controlling my speed control today. So one finger guiding. Oops, I was watching the screen instead of what I was doing. And I'm thinking, yeah, see, so I glued right, right on that little tip. And now I can cut both of those dog ears off. And it should open up easier. I'm giving my fingernails a break from the nails I usually use. In case you're wondering why I'm using such bright fingernails. These are press-on nails, and after I'm done with the show, I just take them right off. <laughs> so. It's been, my daughter said, well, how many years has it been? Have your nails ever been naked? And, and I was like, you know, they haven't been naked since my company started. So 32 years of always having nails on. And I've been, I got the right vitamin B and my nails are starting to grow better. So I'm super excited at the prospect of finally figuring out why my nails were growing, like kind of pointing up, they were concaving and pointing up. And now they're not, they're starting to have the normal, natural fingernail look. So, but the transition period is still, um, is not very attractive so I'm sparing you that and once my nails are all healthy looking I will go back to having a natural look rather than these bright turquoise colored nails so if if it's bugging you now you know why because usually in all my years in business I didn't have painted nails they're always just the natural French tip look not that it matters because we're sewing so I'll get back to showing you my presser pressing the fabric. And I didn't do it the way I tell you to do it, so I'm struggling. So press to one side first. So now you can see the fabric is all pressed to one side, or both pieces are. Then now we press to the other side. And it starts to open up. Makes it a lot easier. It also prevents you from having a little like fold that irons tend to, to have happen occasionally. If you've ever had that happen, you know that it affects the size of the fabric pieces that you work so hard to cut accurately. Oh, that's so funny, Amy. Yeah, maybe all the butterflies are going to the Grand Canyon first. They're sightseeing. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna take a little trip it's it's so nice the weather's so nice in Arizona we're gonna go see the Grand Canyon and fly over to Sedona next piece I love you guys so much so fun to hang out with you on Thursdays I'm so bad about getting my pre-recorded videos out, but we have just been so busy here. There we go. So I can't glue the dot because because I cut off my dog ear. I'm just gonna hold my finger there. It's very light touch. This finger goes with the fabric. This one stays stable. Elbows are down, and oh, I could be using, I could be using this for my elbow. For those of you who are new to the show and new to me, and if you don't have our creative feet. When you're sewing with other traditional feet, your elbows are generally up, but with our products, you're supposed to rest. And uh, so I have this cute little pad now for my elbow so that when I'm doing the octi hoops or whatever my 
my elbow bone doesn't get sore from resting. And, and let me know if you guys want me to teach you how I made this one. And if you do, I can. It's entirely up to you. It's very similar to this. Okay, so this finger holds fabric together. This finger pushes gently toward the foot, making sure the fabric doesn't bounce off that guide. Now this fabric is, this one here is coming up and it could flip up. This is another use for the presser. So you just set the presser there and it keeps it laying down. And I think I did this. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. Press to one side first. We're almost done with this part. The fun part is making the leaves. And you can make more than one if you like. I only made one on the one I did last night. And I was thinking of using some wire and showing you how to make wire edged leaves. That's if you're really good. Thank you, Amy. By the way, our large Applequick scissors are on their way to us. Of course, anything on the on its way to us lately is anybody's guess on how long it'll take to get here. If you live in Australia, we, we are officially not able to ship to you right now. I don't know if the website's letting you order or not. It's probably saying there is no shipping option right now. And that's Australia trying to get caught up on all the shipping orders that are coming in to the country because of the lockdown. And this is September 23rd of 2021. If you're hearing that, make sure you check your calendar to know when or if that is accurate as we're speaking now. You tried making what years ago when it was a flop? One of these? Is that what you're talking about, Pearl? I forgot what I said because I hear you like a minute and a half after, or I see what you said. You hear what I said a minute and a half after I've already said it, and I'm already saying something else by the time I see what you you guys write in the comments. So it's it's pretty wacky, and I actually hear what I say when you hear it in my left ear. So while I'm talking, I'm hearing myself say something before <laughs> it's very strange so now we're going to put oops one of these seam allowances isn't flat i i didn't have it flat when i sewed that and that's going to be a problem so i'm just going to snip it we want this to be as flat as possible when we're joining so this is where we're, we're going to be sewing over all of the layers in this piece bringing these together so how many layers does the foot and the needle have to go through at this point we have one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times two. Twenty four layers of fabric at that point. And what I'm trying to, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm trying to maintain is the rule of starting on the outside of the pizza. And I'm going to clip it here with one of our clippets.
Okay. This would definitely be a time when gluing would be a great idea. Just remember, you'll have to pull the fabric apart and lay it flat. Always securing. And we're going to secure here, even though I won't stop. Oops, finger there. So this is where it's not a bad idea to glue because the fabrics can shift <laughs> as I don't do it. Another time to use this to kind of smoosh those down as it goes beneath the foot. And here I'm going to increase stitch length. It's two and a half millimeters long right now and I'm going to take it to three and a half millimeters long to help it have more pull so I don't feel the tendency to want to pull from behind the foot. Anytime you get your fingers and you start going back here, you know that you're probably trying to compensate for the stitch length and you just need to increase your stitch length. Now before you come down the mountain, you shorten it back down again. If you can't Get it over in the case of like using a pair, sewing a pair of blue jeans or something thicker, you take a pack of needles, lower the needle, lift the foot, place the foot on the pack of needles. You must lower that needle first because that's what protects you from sewing through the pack of needles. And this is going to pop out the back in a minute. And that's how you can get over a bump. And we're back to the finger to the side and planted finger in the front. And we are making a pumpkin. And we have a pizza. Am I making any of you want a pizza? I don't know why I get so much pleasure out of that. It's quite silly. Once again, we'll press those seams open. And we have two halves of this to do. Now, if I were doing something that mattered, and I know that it matters that I'm making a pumpkin, but I don't have to press this with an iron because I'm gonna about I'm about to shove a bunch of fluff in there and stretch everything out of shape anyway. So I'm I don't need to turn on my iron and spray starch and all of that. In fact, starching it helps in the sewing process, but after that, it's not helpful in the gathering process. It's not helpful in the uh, gathering process. Did I say that twice? <laughs> I think I did. So here's where we have a pile of fabric, and that's why this end is flat on the presser, so that you can smoosh. Yep, that's the technical term. So you can smoosh all 24 layers of fabric where they all intersect one another. And smoosh them down and make them flat. And notice I, I'm grabbing it like this and pushing down and there we go. Ta-da! This would make a cute little skirt, wouldn't it, on a Barbie? Ooh. Maybe we'll have to do that one day. A little flamingo. A little flamingo dancer kind of skirt. Isn't that cute? That'd be a cute skirt for us, too, huh? Hmm. All right. It's kind of an A-line. So now I'm going to gather... 
This is when you do have the opportunity, if you wanted to, embroider the front of your pumpkin and make it a jack-o'-lantern, which if I didn't see what time it was, I might do that right now. But you could write on it with a marker. <laughs> We're sewers. Don't say that. Yeah, the lighter weight the fabric, the easier it is to gather your fabric, right? I'm going to put on our pearls and piping foot because it's the foot that I use for a good portion of my zigzag stitches. Of my gathering techniques. I'm almost back to normal, you guys. I was, I was fighting a bug and I'm back, but still a little... <clears throat> And the brain is not as good as, as it could be. And I just used the pearls and piping foot last night. I put it where it belongs. All right, so the pearls and piping foot has this little washer that slides left and right. It's clear, so you may not see it right there on the bar. See that? It's like a little donut. And that makes it so that whatever you're sewing moves left or right underneath the needle. For my machine, I believe that is the side I want it on for gathering and what it is, what I'm trying for is I want to make it so that if I were to put thread underneath there and pull it up, which is what I'm going to do, I want my needle to be centered over that so I don't have to look. I can let the foot do the guiding for me. Pretty short to the left, is it? So I would set a zigzag stitch and then you just turn the hand wheel and kind of see when you're looking inside See if I can tip the machine up. Every time I try this doesn't seem to, something seems to go haywire. So you're looking down there and you want to make sure your needle swings left and right of the tunnel. If it doesn't, then take the foot off, slide the washer to the opposite side. Ugh, well, I know Tinkerbell, mommy's dropping something every time I do something. Such a good dog. Yes, you are. Okay. Now there's lots of ways of gathering. And what I found was the best way was to use my bobbin and needle thread gathering technique. You need a piece of bobbin and needle thread long enough to go all the way around the object that you're sewing. So if I go from one half to the other and do that again, that should be enough to go all the way around. Am I right? It's all about math. I need to go a little bit longer. Okay, and this is what I'm going to actually be pulling on. And I'm going to use right side up on the on this. Needle up. Okay. I'm going to start in the middle so I don't have a seam allowance to confuse me on where I started my gathering. Holding on to just the needle thread. Bring the needle thread needle down. Raise the needle back up. Pull the bobbin thread up through the fabric. This is in my instructional DVD on the creative feet. Where are my little thread nips? Now I want center needle position and I'm going to sew a couple stitches. This is going to anchor this. I'm going to go back. 
couple stitches. Lower the needle, lift the foot, take both of those threads, and now we're going to hold them up. And that's where the little tunnel is on the foot. And the tunnel isn't a U, it's an A. So the thread goes up and it's centered in that tunnel. So you don't have to watch it. Oops. And now I'm switching to a zigzag stitch. And I'm using a width that's relatively narrow. I'm going to go down to a 3.0 millimeter zigzag swing. And if I was doing something where I wanted the fabric to gather really precisely, then we, we don't want to use a really long stitch length because the stitch length determines how much we can gather something up. But since it's a pumpkin, I'm going to use a longer stitch length. This will make it easier to gather. It'll take less time to go all the way around. I'm going to go all the way to five millimeters on my stitch length. So the width is going to go over and it's going to make a big bite out of the fabric, which will gather this faster. Fingers up like this. And this is all normal tension. Where your eye is focused is right here on the side of the foot, making sure the edge of the fabric stays there. Ignore everything else. As long as your hand is up, then the thread is centered in that tunnel. And you can see how fast we can go around. I did not need it. I did not need that much thread. But if I were doing like a skirt ruffle, when do I, I use this on a thicker, when the fabric is thicker. And since I spray starched, it is thicker than I normally would like have. You know, if you just had cotton without that, but it made it easier to sew it, so. I'm not centered with my needle. I gotta go back. Make sure you're centered with your needle so you can see where you're going. But this is the kind of thing that would happen to you. So you wanna make sure that you can still see that it's, you don't want your needle to catch that thread. There we go. I started looking at the needle. It doesn't, doesn't do you any good when you're doing this because you see how it all gets bunched up. You don't have to pull that much though. You can actually just have a light hold and just let it sew and gather it afterward. I'm just trying to make the gathering part less. Keep your eye focused on the side of the foot over here. I'm tying a knot. I have a knot stitch. And you pull out and you cut the thread that's connected to the fabric short. Now we have that. Now in this case, we're actually going to have both threads because I used a different gathering technique than I normally would. So I did not need to go through all that trouble to check my bobbin and needle threads. And like I said before, there's some hand sewing in this project. And the hand sewing part is trying to get all that gather to come together. And that's partly why we end up with buttons on both sides of something like this something to hide if it's not you know perfect at this point this is when you start stuffing it 
and I'm using this, and this is, I don't know how many years old this is. They don't date. <laughs> It'd be cool if they put a date on it. You know, then I could say, I've had this since, this is probably, how old are my kids? I don't think I've bought any polyfill since it's probably probably over 30 years old. And it's polyester, so it doesn't decay and rot and disappear. And if you break it up in little smaller segments as you stuff, you'll get you'll have more control over the the shape of the outside of the pumpkin as you continue stuffing and I will continue stuffing now. So break it apart even though you just don't want to do that because it's so fun just to shove a big piece in there. And I'm divvying it up trying to do the outsides first. Break it apart and stick it in there. This is the boring part of watching a video. How long is she going to spend stuffing that thing? You could also use rice in this to uh, give it some weight or sand. And make this be a doorstop. You could stick a rock inside. But the nice thing about using the type of gathering technique I did is see how I'm able to pull it and it doesn't break. Yep, and it's getting there. Hi, Sharon. Oh, I'm so glad that you're back. A lot of people kind of lost touch during the summer. I'm going to stuff it some more because I want to get that. I want to get each slice to have its, its shape like I did on these. This is what we're making. Still have to make the leaf and the st stock thing, or stem. I gotta mute because I'm gonna sneeze because this stuffing is over 30 years old, so I'm muting myself. Crushed walnut shells. Ooh, you know, anything that has like a, a nice uh, seasonal smell to it. Maybe put some cinnamon sticks in there. Maybe a cinnamon stick for the, for some of the pumpkins would be nice. Some, where they do those pine cones and they make them smell like cinnamon. Ah, oh, I love that. I'm like, this would kind of be, if we had this and it was lined, we could have like a, I was thinking like a candle holder or put a pot, a plant inside. This was my running through my mind last night when I was tightening up the other one. So yeah, I think in the pattern, I'm going to give you like six different size pizza slices so that you can make a variety of different size pumpkins. 
Still want to make sure that we can bring the middle together. See where I didn't sew all the way? And I thought I had. I probably did, but I didn't tie. I didn't do a good enough knot at the beginning. But we got hand needles. And we're going to have to hand sew this, this center down like that. And then we bring the thread through the bottom. And then, we, then we're going to crisscross and bring thread over. Like you see here. And that's what helps give it that shape. I need to stuff it more. I think these would make really cute little gifts. And what could we use for Christmas time and Hanukkah? I want it to expand a little more. So this is where I was thinking, I'm probably going to have to m come up with another pattern to get a tall, to get a tall pumpkin. Right now I've, I've nailed the, the smaller pumpkin. Okay, I think that's enough. So, real. Kind of want to have your gathers just even, not have one area more than the other. It's not that much bigger, but it is bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this long thread now, and I made it quite long, through a hand sewing needle. Both threads, so they have more strength. I wish I had a better selection of hand sewing needles. Where is that one I used last night? This is when it pays to have a long needle, but sometimes the long needles are really blunt and they are destructive to your fabric. Where's that long one? Hope I didn't drop it. And Of all the things for me to lose, a long hand sewing needle is probably not the best thing. I just used it last night. I had it poked in this. Well, I may have to resort to one of my not so good ones and give it one look, see if I have any good ones. I have one pack of hand sewing needles. There's another one. Cool. Pays to clean your drawers. These aren't very long though, but they're, they're more for tapestry fabric. This one at least has a point on it. But it's significantly shorter than the one that I'm looking for. What you want is a self-sculpture doll needle, which is about three inches long. I'll, I'll let you know if I find it. I'm going to make sure I don't find it with my foot.
You think I need more stuffing? I'm going to anchor it to a certain point and then I am going to add more stuffing, probably. I'm sure there are many of you that are better at hand sewing than me. And what I'm struggling with is that I don't have my glasses on. I put all three of my glasses away. I love these new ones. They match my jacket. Okay, so the threads I used to gather with, and I didn't secure it, which is why I am now an inch and a half away from there. But I can take this and now incorporate it into the stitching. Gigantic needle. Now that takes the burden off the little stitch that I had before. So I'm just doing a running stitch. I believe that's what it's called. Oh my goodness, that's such a big needle. So we want to stuff it more, but we also have to be able to close it up in the middle. And I didn't want this to take all day. Got to do the fun part, the leaf. Squish, squish, squish. Oh, this would be a fun, if you made this with terry cloth for a child, for taking a bath, or us. All right, I can hear Amy. Put more in there. I expect you guys to take pictures of your pumpkins and put them in the school. You guys have been pretty lax on that. I gave you a break. It was summer. Now it's autumn. Now it's time to get, get to sewing again and start showing me that you're, you're doing these things. All right, that's like way more stuffing than it should be able to hold. I think putting a rock in one of these and making it a doorstop would be cool. I'm not doing any more than that. You can't make me. And what I found worked for getting these, getting the circle to close up was I had to tie a knot at some point. You just kind of have to go, okay, that's as close as it's coming. Tie a knot and join it to the other side. Ah! These aren't my normal nails. <laughs> Got to commit to this at some point. Come on. Did I already tie a knot? I don't think I did. See, Amy, it's all your fault. I made it too much. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, come on. What happened? Take it out. Feels like I'm going the wrong way. Take that last stitch out. We know the hole's big enough, that's for sure. Or maybe it did tie a knot. <laughs> All right. Instant replay. Squish and pull, squish and pull. There we go. Now we're almost to a closed up center. Now if I had someone here that could sew instead of just dogs. Now the reason this is harder to tie a knot is because it's it's a cord in essence. So I could tie a knot all I want on the end of this, but it's still not going to hold it. We have to anchor it. And the way to do it is how I was doing it, using a needle. Interesting. <laughs> no, don't undo yourself. I used to make ponies and teddy bears and all kinds of stuffed animals. And that I had a lot of hand sewing needles that were great. And my thimble somewhere in my drawer. I saw the thimble recently. This is when I have to tell myself to be calm, relax. It's just awkward. So any of you expert hand sewers and getting all frustrated watching me struggle? Ha! All right, well, it's not as close of a knot as I wanted, but... I can now bring that end to this end. I really should find my thimble. We're getting there. I hope I'm not boring any of you. Hand sewing is so much slower. <laughs> it's not too much pull harder. Amy is so pushy. Sorry, I hope I didn't say that too loud. I'm sure there's, they've come out with some better stuffing since I did stuffed animals, soft sculptured. I mean, I know they have because I've gotten my dog's toys and they're so soft and so I'm interested in learning more about what they use.
this is when you go, maybe it's not something I want to sell at a craft show. I am going to perfect the pattern though, because I really think I could do something in the way I lay this out to make this part easier. <laughs> All right, enough of this. Tie this off. Need to get this thread to stop moving. This is my high school colors. Taft High School. It was a burgundy and a gold. <laughs> All right, so basically now we want to go through and go out the back. And this is when you need that long needle. So you can find the center of something better. And I found I needed pliers to do this yesterday. So what you want to do is come where one of those separations are between the two fabrics and kind of pull in and that creates that little pumpkin tushy look. <laughs> And repeat and just keep doing that. Definitely could it do could do a better job if I didn't overstuff it and didn't lose my hand sewing needle. I may also not have cut a long enough piece of thread. The needle's right where those 24 layers are joined together. I'm not going to make you endure me doing this whole process because I can do it later to finish it. But you can see how it's also better to go do one side and then do the opposite side. All these threads, there we go. Time to make the leaf and the stem. You guys get the idea on, on that part, correct? So you see how it has the pumpkin shape now? from those threads being pulled on the seam line. And I'm going to make a leaf. One day we're going to meet in person, Amy. Have we ever met in person? Did I meet you at a show? I have a lot of sarcastic customers and they love to totally pick on me at shows. And just so you all know, I won't be doing a show until I never have to wear a mask to do a show. And and I would I always have a a lot of people all the way around me. So, till I can do that without risk to anyone, I won't be doing shows like that. However, I will be doing retreats 
and I plan on doing them up here to start because I traveled for 32 years and I think it's I deserve some time home and have you guys come to me so let's see green fabric I know I own some Like I said before, this is, it, it is green. It just doesn't look green. And I'll have a leaf also in the pattern that you guys can print. So expect the pattern within four, within like two, by the weekend, if not sooner. And I didn't do a real pumpkin leaf because I think they have like big leaves. <sighs> it's hot in here. Wonder what wonder what the temperature is outside. It's been dropping down to fifty degrees up here, and we're hoping the mosquitoes will get the hint and stay away. This is the shape I made for my leaf last night. I'll just do the same thing. It's kind of like ears. <laughs> and uh, if you want ears for Halloween, I do have a video on my YouTube channel on making cat ears. You can make them longer, make bunny ears, or any, any animal you want from the process. And it's very lightweight. They don't clamp onto your head. This is what we use to cover up the not pretty top. So if you had one leaf, I mean, you could even, you could even just do that. And then, like I said, get a cinnamon stick and shove it in there. A lot of people have suggested getting sticks from the yard and sticking it in there. But I made this stem looking piece of twisted fabric because the pumpkin does have like a twisted looking stem if I remember correctly and you can see it has this leaf this leaf has some stitch on it and that's what I'm going to do but it would be I don't know I, I don't think it's necessary to have a wire we'll save the wires edge for something else another lesson In part because I'm not sure where my wire is. I think it would be prettier to have a gold thread. Are you guys having a good time? What's on your sewing table? Share with me. Do any of you, have any of you not sewn for like a couple months? It isn't uncommon for people not to sew in the summer. I don't think I've ever gone, I don't know, more than a week without sewing something because it's been my career. This would definitely be easier to spray starch at first. And so I will. I have a yawn coming on. <laughs> I think this is closer to the color of the stem. They're not usually dark brown. So I'm gonna use this for that. You want it wired. 
I was like, that must be Amy. No, it's not. It's Sharon. Sharon and Amy both gang up on me. I'm not, I'm I'm done for. Let's see, if I can find my wire really quick, then I'll do a wire opening. I found my fishing line really quick. Oh, there. All right, I found it. It was right where I thought it was. That's good. Things are getting better around here. I still am aw, that kind of looks cute, doesn't it? Oh, how easily entertained I can be. I've been dreaming of Halloween projects. Forgot to turn the iron on. Sewing table quilt made from a baby panel. The panel is a child's prayer. Ah. So were you going to quilt with the octahoops on that? I know I left it down for a long time and it's crazy to do that, but just let me do it. It's 81 in Prescott Valley right now. Thank you, Amy. You're my weather reporter now. So I met you at in 2019. So January 2020 was was the last show I the down in Phoenix and it, it ends at, at the end of January I wish I could remember our inner our interaction now that we've gotten to know each other so well in here so now that's really I was going to compare but I, I starched both of these this wire is is something that I use for lots of different things, but I think there's like something that oh you can they have it covered in the garden center for for tying tomato plants and it has a really neat feature on it. Cutting wire it usually requires tools like this, and you have your wire cutter part of your pliers, which is why these are in the sewing room, because I do things like that. We're going to do a small stitch around the perimeter of this leaf. And so I know how long I need it to be if I kind of go like that. And this is so neat because... You just bring the wire underneath and it doesn't require much strength at all to just snip that. And now this is free to uh, free of the spool. We're going to use the satin edge foot for the wire edge ribbon or wire edging. This is a technique in the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook and Creative Feet Techniques video. And in the video, I call it wire edge ribbon because that's what I designed it for. And then I ended up using it for making leaves and things, plants, flower petals. And I did have plans to show you some really neat things that we can use this technique for. I 
as we sew with this, it's going to go beneath the foot and be lined up right next to the, the guide wire or guide pin on the foot. And if you hold your wire in the front of the foot, it will push away from the guide. It wants to go like that. So what we do, or what you need to do, is you need to be bringing the wire in from the side like this and pushing it against the white part of the guide. And as you do, that keeps it in line with the wire on the foot. I didn't thread the machine. I unthreaded it. Gosh. Last, so the last time Amy saw me at a show, <laughs> I got sick there. I'm pretty sure I got COVID when I was at that show. They actually did say that people got it in January in Phoenix. So during the show, I became really sick. And they, they had a blower blowing down on my table. And so the wind was blowing things off my table. And if you've ever tried to sew in a windstorm... Well, it was just a, it was just a, a tragic show for me. The next show I did was in Seattle, where the first two people perished in King County. So the first day, of, that's when people were just starting to really get that we were in a pandemic. So those the last two shows I did were pretty bitter, bittersweet. Flying geese, you're having trouble with that? I saw a really good tutorial on that. I'm trying to remember whose it was. It might have been Kay Wood. Dear friend of mine that passed in 2019. So she, I think her website is still up. I didn't get her to do... Because I interviewed her for several videos, but I didn't get... First thing we do is the inside. I would look, I would Google Kay Wood and Flying Geese. She had the most incredible mind. Math for her was no big deal. So what I want to do is, before applying the wire, is to do the inside of the leaf to create the stem and then have the little veins come out. Choose where you want them to go. And it is easier if you have, if you just sew a V shape like that, rather than start and stop, start and stop. So have them line up with each other at the stem come out from there this is when i should be using chalk so you guys can see better I remember this working better than it's working. There we go. So that's the idea. If it's a really big one, you could go and do a couple extra. It's just gonna take me longer. Oh well. And I'm using a light color thread, which is going to, because this is light color now, it's going to be harder to, to know that where's thread and where's the chalk. So what you want to do is you want to bring your needle down in the center needle position for this. And this foot really helps you guide on lines. 
because where the where the wire is on the foot if you position your needle right next to that wire you look at the bottom of the foot you'll see that the size of a needle can fit there and there so the white part of the guide is like a wall and there's a hiding spot for your needle to hide behind the wall over here and a hiding spot right over here so before we before we know where the wire goes on the foot so the guide is I'm moving the guide away choose a center needle position lower your needle into the fabric and onto the line Getting to my hand wheel is extremely challenging. All right, so now I know my needle in the center needle position is on that line. And now I move the guide over. And as I do that, I lift the foot to make sure that the fabric hasn't shifted. I need my glasses. Tinkerbell is digging the carpet. All right, I got to move this mic for a second. So when you need to be able to see is when you're setting up the foot. Turn the hand wheel, make sure that that I didn't bend the sewing machine needle with the wire on the foot. Why does this look weird? <laughs> I gotta make this better for me. I can't get to my hand wheel. Okay, it's all set up. Yeah, Kay was amazing. We had so much fun that night. She kept me up for hours. <laughs> People got frustrated with me for talking. They just wanted to hear her, but I wasn't live, and uh, I just filmed a whole bunch of videos with her. We'd known each other for over 30 years. I slept on a twin bed in her guest bedroom. Once she finally stopped, she was pulling out. She had like 580 quilt tops. Can you imagine making 580 quilt tops? What an achievement. So she had stopped making them into quilts and binding years and years and years ago. And just dedicated her career to helping people make things faster and more accurately with less work. And she created and invented some products as well. She was very special to me. She actually saved me. The first show that I met her at was in San Francisco, I believe. Actually, I don't remember what state I was in. <laughs> but Kay, I was like, I couldn't breathe. I was pretty sick and on the floor in the lobby of the convention center. And she, that's how I met her. I was laying on the ground and she looked down over me. <laughs> and she goes... Are you okay? <laughs> I said, I can't breathe. And she gave me a Mucinex DM. And that 
was like a lifesaver for me. I was able to work the show because of that. So now does it seem smart to start at the point of the leaf? It's better to start at the end, but we could always put another piece of fabric right up here to help make it so it could start right there. Now I could just sew a straight stitch down this, but I'm gonna show you how you can do a zigzag stitch really small using a one millimeter wide zigzag. Oh, my phone is like falling. In answer to your question, Sharon, I was just doing this. Whoops. Ah, sorry, guys. Dang it. All right. I got it. I need to alter my setup. Boy, am I whiny about this, huh? That's something changed is what's going on. I can't put my hand where I normally put it to turn the hand wheel. So I have a one millimeter wide zigzag for the center of the leaf, which is really, really small. Why do you keep falling? All right, I got to move this microphone. <laughs> what did I change? Wish I could show you, but I can't move cameras. And you guys could see what I'm dealing with right now. Oh, I'm sorry, I am. Okay, I'm going to be swinging over the wire. The width of the stitch is just as big as the, just a little bit bigger than the wire. It's kind of scary. But the, that is just under a millimeter wide, that wire. This, I call it a wire because it is a piano wire, and that's what makes it unbreakable. You can't break these. It's cut with a laser to the length that we need. And that's why your sewing machine can hit it and hit it. The needle can hit it over and over and over again without breaking it. I don't know what I changed, Sharon, but I can't reach my hand wheel, which is new from last week. So I must have done it last. I, I take pictures in between and then I move things. So that's what I did. My arms are short, so this arm, this sewing machine is big. All right, needle over. I might need to go to one and a half. So now I'm trying a one and a half millimeter width. Right swing goes on the right of the wire, left swing goes on the left. And the needle's like just right there. So this is gonna I'm at 1.4 length. I'm going to go a little shorter. Go to a 1. So it's not going to be solid. Mostly I'm just nervous because I can barely see what I'm doing because now the microphone is in front of my eyes. I'm looking here. And that chalk line is what I'm trying to guide over, which I wiped off on accident. So you want the the, guide, the white part of the guide to be sitting to the side of the line, and then your needle is on the line when you're using a straight stitch. But when you're using a zigzag, you want to aim for the line. And of course, the line that I drew before is iron erasable, and the chalk will just disappear. So if you're not right on the line, well, no one's going to know. Did that camera angle change? Because I feel like you can't see as well. I'm 
running late on my show. See how nice that looks? And now I'm going to do the fishing line. I have to text my friend. Just hung up on her. She's going to go, oh, that's right. She's doing her show. Okay. But I try to end at 4, and it is 4.30. Uh-oh. It's all that overstuffing the pumpkin that I was doing. <laughs> Who's bugging who? I'm going to use now a 3.0 or 3.5 width. And I'm going to use a 0 0.6 stitch length because I'm just kind of guessing right now. And what I'm going to do is bring the needle down in the right swing of the zigzag stitch. So that's the first thing you got to figure out. Left swing, right swing. So when the needle comes down in the right swing of the zigzag stitch, then you turn the nut, moving the wire over until it touches the left side of the needle. And notice I lift the foot. As I do that, because the feed dogs, the, the guide can get stuck on the feed dogs. And and then before you sew, you always double check to make sure you did it right. And I want to start on the end. So left swing on the fabric, right swing over the guide. And we want to make sure the wire is off the edge. And I got to... Get my nose down here and see if I did it right. Okay, I'm right or correct. So now we want to take the wire and slide it in there. And this is when some of you will go, well, that's just, just crazy. Now we're not just swinging over a guide piano wire. Now we're swinging over two wires. I'm going to go to 0 0.5. Wish I could see. So my goal, my what I'm looking at is the wire, making sure it's touching the white part of the guide. And it's very little touching on the fabric because this foot's the one I designed for this. This is its job. It knows, it doesn't know anything. <laughs> But people go, how does it know to stay on the edge? This is when it will be more likely to stay lined up without your assistance. And I'm trying to keep the wire on the top of the fabric because I want to see where that wire is. This is going to be the trickiest point. The point is going to be the trickiest point. I'm going all the way off. Stop with the needle up. Lift the foot. Pull off. Okay, I'm going to go back a couple stitches. We don't want to go all the way off. Stitch is snug and it's on that wire. I just don't want to pull the stitches and have them spread out. And now we're going to try to make this into a point. <laughs> 
It's been a few years since I've made a leaf this way, guys, so I'm having to remember what to do. We don't want any loops of thread. So you can pull your thread back to your spool to get any slack out of that thread. I don't know if you can see that. But now the thread's really tight. So I'm gonna hand move it. And because it is a point and there is literally only a teeny tiny bit of connection with the feed dogs and this fabric, I am going to, to, to move it myself for a couple stitches. What I call walking the fabric. Kind of have to walk the dog sometimes, you have to walk the fabric. And we're and now I'm nervous because I, I, if you could see how little I'm able to see, <laughs> you'd be nervous for me. <laughs> that microphone is right in my line of sight. So I am trusting the foot entirely. Only been able to see here, not being able to see anything back here. But I designed it for someone who was blind, so you know. If she can do it, I can do it. Don't lose track. Keep, keep your eye on the guide and the wire. Ignore everything else. The needle swinging. All that is not as important. And I started looking at the needle and almost, and my I wasn't pushing the wire against the guide for a second. So it's good to talk to yourself. Look at the front, look at the front of the foot, look at the front of the foot, look at the front of the foot. Ignore the needle, look at the front of the foot. And I'm tying it off. This almost looks like leather. This fabric is just cotton, but it really has the, the appearance of suede or... What do you think? Isn't that cool, you guys? And then this would be like hand sewed in and you can shape your leaf however you want it. I'm going to use this wire, I think, to connect the leaf. Use it like a hand sewing needle. If it's strong enough, let's see. Come on, get in there and then come back out. Make it like a hook. <laughs> it's silly because you can just hand sew it in there. That is working really well. So let's see if we can get this side to hook in there. Come on. And you could have hand, I could have stitched that edge under or something, but you can see how it just disappears in there. I'm not going to remove this wire until the stem is on there because the stem could be supported by the wire as well. I pulled and made it gather, 
which was not the desired effect. I lost my point that I worked so hard for. Oops. It's coming alive, you guys. So the stem was really easy. I just cut a rectangle. Hi, Pearl. Anybody else come in late, late? Hi, Veronica. I think I said hi to everybody else. Okay, so basically, the stem on a pumpkin, they look kind of weathered and twisted and hanging over so you don't really need to stuff it you just kind of need to make a tube and make it look all messy so what I did was I sewed a tube and but I made a little gusset on the top I didn't like that afterward I ended up hiding the gusset because I did it in a different color so when it came down to it it was pretty much I just put right sides together and so down one side, I think this is longer than I need it to be. Here we go. Quarter inch seam allowance again. Left needle position on a straight stitch. Move the guide over to the quarter inch distance between and this is entirely up to you if you do more than this but this is all I did Turn right sides out. Remember, this is a messy looking stem. What would I do without my presser? Now y'all know you can do wire edge leaves. So it kind of, see how you don't pull it all the way out? And then you can even like try to make it twisted by pulling it over and then pulling it over and pulling it over. And then I stitched across the bottom. To keep it all messed up. And we have this wire now to use to, it's pretty sharp, should be able to go through. Might not be able to go through all those layers. I don't have to use it. But I was also thinking, 
if we wanted to, we could make a really long one of these and you have the wire inside. And it would make it so that you could actually bend your, your stem as well. But in this case, it's just me trying not to hand sew anymore. <laughs> I would definitely just cut the wire, use a hand needle and hand stitch around with a whip stitch to get that to stay down. You don't need to see me hand sew that, do you? And there you go, another pumpkin. And now I have two sizes with varying colors, two little pumpkins. I just think this is going to be one of my most enjoyable decorations for the fall. And as I said, I'm going to work on making a taller pumpkin. I think I already know what I need to do to make it possible. All you really need to do is take a big pumpkin and chop it up. That's one way of making a pattern. So ha happy pumpkin making, everybody. And no orders went out today. So if you're waiting on an order, um, it will go out tomorrow. As I mentioned before, if you're in Australia and you don't see a shipping option, it's because your country still is not allowing us to ship in to Australia yet. Um, they just are trying to keep up with all the packages coming into Australia is what they say. So it's temporary, but it's been going on since September 3rd. So... I don't know if there's anything else. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any. Thank you guys. I think they're cute too. And I love the fact that we have them sectioned with so you can have different colors going around, which I didn't see anybody else do except for one and it kind of had a weird shape. And if you guys ever want me to show you how to make this one, it's very similar but a different shape and it's a use for my pretty buttons all right with that uh, if you're new to my channel be sure to subscribe if you like this video go ahead and hit the thumbs up button especially after the live is over if you're watching this after the live it's uh, September 23rd 2021 Thank you so much for watching and participating in the chat. If you don't know that I have a free online school called Create with Claire Rowley, it's at create.clairerowley.com. My website is creativefeet.com. And we also have, you know, all the social media sites as well. And with that said, I love you all. See you next time. Bye.